out of Bunkara on a wet afternoon in the first week of January. The shiny gifts long forgotten, the last few unwanted quality street sweets being poked listlessly around the bottom of the tin, the novelty of films being on the television in the afternoon well and truly over. Each house was just a waiting room for school to reopen. She wondered if anything had changed in the twenty years since she'd lived here. Probably not. The kids were no doubt stabbing at their phones, and though they had hundreds of television stations, she could almost feel the overheated boredom oozing from the terraced houses leading down from Bridge Street. She was surprised by how fast her journey had been. Growing up here, Dublin had seemed like some distant metropolis, but now, with a gleaming new motorway, Bunkara was just a couple of exits north of Kilkenny. Had the country shrunk, or had America changed her sense of distance? The crisp blue road signs, with their bright reflective lettering and kilometres, seemed at odds somehow with the places they led to. Sleepy grey market towns that remained rooted in the past. Would this be the last time she ever made this trip? Now her mother was gone, she had no real ties to the place. Of course there were a few cousins and her uncle and aunt, but they had never been close. And once the house was sold, what reason would she have to return? Ahead of her on the left, just past the railings of the small Methodist church, she could see the family shop, Keane and Sons. The name was picked out in ornate plaster on the facade that had been painted for as long as Elizabeth could remember in an insipid colour that reminded her of uncooked chicken. She slowed down to look in the windows. To the left of the doors was a copse of artificial Christmas trees, while the display on the right consisted of some flat-screen televisions and a trio of gleaming black-and-chrome baby buggies. Her car was just passing the doors when they opened and an incongruously glamorous woman stepped out. Shit, it was Noelle, her cousin Paul's wife. They ran the shop now. Had she seen her? Elizabeth glanced in her rear-view mirror and saw a long, thin arm waving. Christ, she must have the eyes of a hawk. Elizabeth groaned. She had hoped to make it all the way to Convent Hill, unobserved, but knew she would have to stop now. That whole side of the family already thought she was a stuck-up bitch. She put the car into reverse and pulled up alongside Noelle, who was holding a plastic Keen and Sons bag aloft to protect her bright blonde hair from the rain. Elizabeth took in Noelle's skin-tight jeans and short padded jacket that allowed people to fully appreciate her trim figure. How was it possible that this woman had produced three babies? Elizabeth considered her own forgivingly loose hooded sweatshirt and her cropped dark hair with streaks of grey, which her son Zach delighted in telling her was less of a hairstyle and more of a hair cut. She prodded in effectually some buttons till the passenger window went down. Bravely trying to banish her concerns about just how bad her makeup-free, sleep-deprived face might look, she leaned across and called out, Hi, Noel. Terrible day, isn't it? It is, it is. I thought it was you. It was the hair I noticed first. <laughs> Noelle emitted a small shriek to indicate how pleased she was by her perceptiveness. You must have had a fierce drive. We didn't know you were coming back. There was a slight accusatory tone in her voice. I didn't know myself, Elizabeth lied. Zack has gone to see friends, so I thought I'd come back and sort out the house before term time starts up. This was also a lie. Her son had gone to visit his father on the west coast. She wondered why she hadn't just told the truth. Was she saving herself from embarrassment or Noel? You should have let us know. We'd have put the heating on for you. You'll come down for your dinner now, won't you? You're very kind, but I won't. I grabbed a few bits and pieces on the way out of Dublin, and all I really want to do is sleep. I'll call down tomorrow. You should go in, Noel. You're getting soaked. Well, if you're sure, and if you get up there and change your mind, just calm down. We're still eating Christmas. We missed having your mother this year, of course. Noelle pushed the corners of her bright red lips down to indicate the sort of regret you might show a toddler that had banged their knee. Anyway, welcome home. Elizabeth forced a smile and waved. Judgmental bitch. Did Noelle not understand that she could never make Elizabeth feel any guiltier than she already did? The horrible tug of war between being both the single child of a dying woman and a single parent living thousands of miles away was finally over, and she had to admit she was glad. Elizabeth put the car into gear and drove on. The road over